Hello and welcome to Ditching Hourly. I'm Jonathan Stark. Today I am rejoined by friend of the podcast, Kevin Friedberg. Kevin, welcome back. Thanks for having me, Jonathan. So today we've talked about many things. We've talked on this show on Doing Daily, your fellow daily emailer, uh, probably other places too that I can't even remember. But today our specific entry point is going to address a pain that I, I see from a lot of people on my list, a lot of people in my audience where let's say someone's a freelancer or a consultant and they email me, they're on my list, but they're sending from a Gmail address. They don't have a website. They don't have a domain name. And there are even ones that have a domain name, but when you go to it, there's no website there. And they, they just haven't gotten around to it. They don't know what to write. It seems like a huge job uh, or they, maybe they do have a website, but they hate it. Their, their own website. They, they just made some stuff up. They, just talked about themselves. They just don't know what to, they just don't know how to do it. And, and Kevin here has a very, very novel approach to it. That is what we're going to talk about today. So how to get around that cold start problem where you either don't have a website or you don't know what, you just don't know what to put on it. Cool. Before we get there, can you do a quick intro in case people are meeting you for the first time? Yeah. Uh, so th and thanks for that lovely intro, Jonathan. Um, so, um, uh, I have a company ironically called seven second websites, um, where the ironic part, um, is for, for such a long time, you know, I've been really obsessed with websites. And then at some point, maybe, maybe a couple of years ago, there was this big sea change where I think we all sort of realized like no one is contacting us off our website. I almost feel like I, in hindsight, like I did like a, a two year study where I just, um, Anyone that would DM me on LinkedIn, uh, or I would just straight up DM them if they, if I love their website and I go, Hey, that's a great website. Um, are you getting a lot of, um, leads from it? Almost as if to say like, Hey, I could really use some help, you know, um, you know, give me some pointers cause your, your site looks great. And invariably a hundred percent of them would say, I haven't gotten a, a comp no one sold out the contact page in a year. Wow. Yeah. Um, and so that just really started to pivot with, with my business of just, um, starting with, cause the website's, the, it's not a one-on-one -on -one conversation, uh, an email is, um, and that's what you and I have worked on together a lot. And so that's really what I'm more focused on now is, is creating these one-on-one -on -one conversations to sell, you know, productized services, um, you know, packages, that kind of thing, but, but doing it uh, starting with a conversation rather than a website. It's kind of backwards, but yeah, I like it though. What does this look like? So if someone comes to you, a client comes to you and is like in that situation where they know they need to update their website and they just don't know what to write. Like, how do you handle that situation with this kind of an approach? I love those that this happens a lot. Um, where either they'll, they'll start with quite a bit of resistance. Like, like, please, basically like, please don't make me write a website. Uh, <laughs> please don't make me launch one, create one, or they'll come and say, you know, we, I really need a website. And either way, my answer is almost always like, what if you just didn't do that? Uh, <laughs> what if we just skipped that entirely and started with email, which you can kind of get going in like a week. Right. Um, and just the relief. It, uh -huh. on their faces is palpable knowing they don't have to sort of create this big boulder of a thing where it's like, here's my full business. Um, uh, so yeah, that, that it, it's really nice for me, honestly, uh, just cause I, I, I'm a writer. Uh, that's, you know, what part of what I do. And I just know that that's a, it's a heavy lift is every business owner is kind of saying, Oh, I guess I got to write my great American novel. Yeah. And it's like, who could do that? That's really <laughs> tough, especially on your own. And yeah. it's saying, well, no, 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 let's put that aside and start with what's actually going to make you some money. <laughs> okay. Yeah, good point. Okay. So what's the first step? So let's say I'm one of your clients and I'm convinced I'm relieved. I'm like, that sounds amazing, but, but what's the process? So I... Start, I want to start them off, uh, with emails just because, um, I know that they can promote that 
and they can get like individuals signing up for that who are then in their niche, their specialty. Um, and it's really the minute, this is another like very gratifying thing, honestly, is um, even if it's just a random sales call, I will start asking questions and they're really the same questions that I ask in any kind of engagement. And they're all basically problem-based questions. Um, and I don't mind asking them again if, if they become clients, but even if not, I don't, I don't care. I just love doing it. Um, the minute they answer any kind of, you know, you know, what's the problem your prospect is coming to you to solve that kind of a question. Yeah. Um, the answer is an email. <laughs> Literally within the first five minutes of a, of a call, they'll say, well, you know, we solved this problem, but I'll tell you something interesting. And they kind of go and they go and they go. And I'm just typing furiously. And I'm like, well, okay, that's four emails right there. <laughs> so let me, let me just spell that out in case the listener is not following. Cause so you'll be, you'll have this conversation with someone and they go off, they, they like brain dump about the problems that they solve for their clients. Is that right? Yeah. And you're capturing, you're like, oh, this is gold. This is great. There's like excitement. You can feel the energy from, from them getting excited about what they do for their clients. And boom, it's like perhaps several emails or a series of emails that kind of could, I would imagine could be a starting point for like their content solar system. Like, oh, you touched on these four key areas or something like that. Is it, am I putting words in your mouth or is that? No, that's the entire thing. And that is what I am working toward is that at about week four is sort of kind of a reveal, um, is like, guess what, you know, you you've created a content solar system, uh, based on, you know, problem solution, of uh, what's getting in the way of them solving that problem. And it's basically all the things that, um, they would need if they do, did want to write a website, it, it's written for them, but through sequential emails. I mean, maybe your first 20 emails, um, they don't sound like a website, obviously. They just sound like a conversation like, hey, I'm going to offer you this, you know, wisdom or insight in, in, into your business for free. Um, but then uh, they're, each one is stemming from uh, their, their website, which is, I think, a homepage sh should be uh, a content solar system. I, I think you could launch all kinds of emails from a homepage if it's based on, uh, yeah, the, the, the content solar system. Cool. So what does your client need to set up to get started writing? Like they, they're not sending from their Gmail account, I'm sure. So like, what are they, what do you have to have them set up so that they can get started writing and sending these emails? And, uh, well, let's start, start there. Like, do you have particular tools that you like to use? What's that look like? Yeah, I usually, I like to set them up with ConvertKit just cause I know that that's my platform or my email service provider. But I mean, you can choose anyone you want, the, you know, the cheaper, the better. Plus I, I've been using ConvertKit so long. I know certain people that work there. And oh, so cool. it's like, if I really have an issue with them, I can, I can email it. Michael at ConvertKit.com. Oh, he's on blast. He'll go, yeah, yeah. He's so good. But, but that's, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I don't get too into the technical side of it, but, but, but the, it's an easy one. Um, and then I, um, I do throw up a, a landing page with them. Uh, it's, even if they have a, a convert kit landing page, not their website. Yeah, exactly. It's just, you know, a homepage that it looks like a homepage, but all it is, is just basically hey, sign up for my email. Um, just to kind of get something going where right. it's like something that someone could click on, you know? Yeah. And for the dear listener that it's just a page hosted by ConvertKit. So if you're listening and you don't even have a website set up yet, you don't need one right away to get started with this, but you can just create a ConvertKit or Drip or any of them, uh, account and they'll have, I think all of them have hosted versions of opt-in pages or subscription pages, whatever you want to call it, that you could then use that URL and send it to people to get them to subscribe to the list. Yeah. So what about on that landing page, when they first start, when they first set up, let's say it's ConvertKit, what do they write on it? How do you figure out what to write on that page? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really like the, the, very much the formulaic. Um, I think I got this from you. Like, I help these people do this thing. 
to achieve this outcome? Um, and that's actually a literal question I use, but it's actually like the sixth or seventh question. Just, I like people to get warmed up and really get into this, like, well, what do I do? How do I help people? Um, I, I like to just have them like vomit as much stuff, just, just to, so it feels really natural. And then, yeah, probably around question six or seven, I'm like, hey, why don't you fill in these blanks? Uh, you know, I help these people do this thing to achieve this outcome. Um, I mean, you could write endless emails just from that line. So I really like that a lot. And it really just, yeah, it gets people to start thinking, um, yeah, there's could be some valuable stuff in this person's um, newsletter. I'll, I'll give it a go. Killer. So the big question I get, you mentioned email 365 already. At the end of that, everybody wants to know how do they get their first subscribers? And there's, there are lots of probably fairly well-known tips and tricks, you know, get your mom to sign up and, you know, all these things. But you have a, an approach on LinkedIn that I absolutely love. Maybe you could go into that a little bit. So there's two approaches and I'll, so I'll go into the LinkedIn approach first. It's not the approach I, it took me a year to find these, the one I'm about to tell you. Um, but, um, I, yeah, so the, the LinkedIn approach in the interest of time is <laughs> great. I just love it yeah. because like, it really says like, um, it's almost like taking, like everyone says, no one fills out this contact form. You're kind of going one by one to people and asking them to fill out the contact form. Um, <laughs> right. You know, it's just like, yeah. you're not just waiting around and maybe you'll be on page one or Google someday. Right. Um, so I do, I DM, I'm, I'm obsessed with the very idea of a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I just don't understand how else. It works best for me. I think most people just, that's what you want. So I DM, uh, and you can automate this too with a very simple script. And I just, I have tinkered and tinkered and tinkered, but in the end, the less I say, the better. And it's always something like, hey, first name, totally okay to say no, but I'm starting a daily, or maybe it's a weekly email and would love any feedback you might have. Also, totally okay to unsubscribe and then i do a space and then that i end on a question can i sign you up i don't put my name i don't say thanks i'm really also a fan of like ending on a question because it's i think you've said this to me a lot i think i i, I ramble clearly and not exactly yeah. news <laughs> and uh and you're like all right so what's the question um <laughs> so, so I just like people will respond to that. Like, can I sign you up? They'll go, no, or yeah. absolutely. And LinkedIn, being LinkedIn, they recognize when you end on a question because they will even put buttons below for them without you doing anything. It says either absolutely, um, not right now, or no thanks or something. I think it's sure, absolutely, and no thank you. I think those are the buttons that they just populate and so people can just go, absolutely. And then um, you can go into their contact form. You now have permission and sign them up to ConvertKit or wherever you, whatever you use. Or, and then I do like to circle back and say, um, hey, I signed up blank at blank.com. Is that your best email? And then they can go, um, no, actually. But even if they never get back to you, they did give you permission, which is like, the number one rule, um, I don't like any kind of spam and, but yeah, that's, that's the gist. That's amazing. And it's, and I'm glad you ended on the spam thing. You're not just, you're getting permission. You're asking people to sign up and, and, and it's wild that that's all you say, because they are, what, how do they make the decision? Do you think, how would you guess that they make the decision to say yes or no? Do you think they go to your profile or, cause they're brand new contacts, right? They're. Or, or are you They're just totally cold. They're a hundred. Totally. I mean, cold. I, I automate. So some people just randomly, like I know them, mm -hmm. but even the ones that I know, like I, there was one guy I went to grade school with in, da mm -hmm. in Dallas and I was like, oh my God, it picked up this guy, David. Um, and I was, I'm always like, oh no, I wonder, but she acted as if we were all, nothing had changed in however many years we talked. Cause it does mm -hmm. have that like, Hey friend. I just want yeah. some feedback and it's, it's a little flattering, 
Um, and I'm always welcome to feedback. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't say anything about what it's about. I mean, that that's the tinkering. Right. Cause I can imagine getting one of these and it having this, even one sentence of like, it's for people like you who have problems like these. And I'm just like, it just feels like an ad or something, you know, I could, I, I love the less is more approach. I don't understand why it works on me, but it, there's just something a little bit more personal about it, even though it's like, so, but the, what, what did they see? So in that scenario, they're going to see your the little LinkedIn picture of your face and it's going to say your tagline underneath it. Do you know what your tagline is off the top of your head? It's changed, but lately it's, um, I help you, um, uh, turn you into your most important client. Interesting. Okay. So yeah. that's okay. So they're, they're getting a little bit of a signal there and, but essentially there's anybody that says yes, essentially doesn't know what's the internet know what to expect. They're just like, I'm just going to get an email from Kev yeah. and I'll find out then. And the, the crazy thing too, is what I think I've learned over the past, say probably been three years since I've really just been super into this stuff is people only see what is about six inches from their face. Um, they don't go to your website. They don't go to your LinkedIn profile. Maybe they'll read a, but the first eight words of that profile, but they're so immediate and so time starved. They really are just taking this at face value. Um, I mean, just, I've just learned like, as these people slowly become clients, it's just obvious. They've just never seen any. They don't know any other world except whatever happened between us and this DM on link, LinkedIn. Yeah. It's like, even if you're automating these things, it's such a person, it's not personalized, but it just feels like it's from a human. And it's this kind of like, there's something, you know, it's, it's leading with value in a sense. It's not, it's so strange. Like as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, that would totally work on me. I don't know why I cannot <laughs> articulate why that would work on me. I'm trying to but I can just feel that it would work on me because it is a little flattering. It puts me on a pedestal a little bit. It, it, it puts, because you're looking for, you, you want help, you're asking for help and I like helping people. So it doesn't, I think if it was more salesy, immediate turnoff, it was any longer immediate turnoff. If it didn't have a clear question at the end, a yes or no question at the end, turn off. You asked for the no, that's, a, that's great. Not asking for the no would turn me off. Cause then it puts pressure on me like, oh, now I got to say no and I'm going to feel bad. But if you re they remove, you've removed the pressure with that message by asking for the no, it's like perfect. I'm curious, what's your, how many of these should I send in a day and how many should I expect to get a yes back? Like just ballparky. It's really like gratifying. It's just one of the more, you can do a lot with LinkedIn and automation. And I have done a lot of different stuff. Um, I have a, kind of another winning script I used for a while, but it, it was too time uh, consuming. Um, this one is, it, there's months I'd, I'll, I'll get 50 subscribers, um, in a month. Um, it, and it also just, I've even gotten people who just signed up, um, for a paid service. They'll ignore the message altogether. Like the, the, can I sign you up though? You know, can I get some feedback and just go, Hey, we need a website. And I'm like, oh, okay. That's not anywhere I can see in that little script there, but okay, <laughs> cool. Um, yeah. but I just, that's a, that's how gratifying this stuff is. But yeah, most people, it's just so they know, they, first of all, they know they can unsubscribe. Um, they, that's so easy now. I think Gmail even has like the unsubscribe thing at the very top and yeah. so it's very low you know, resistance. Um, but yeah, there's months, easily 50 emails in a month. Um, the close second I've heard about is like Facebook ads, uh, is, yeah. is and those are really expensive, but this is and that's but you, I only get 50 if I automate, I do, if I did it manually, first of all, I think I get really bored. Um, I've used it a lot, with just people I to kind of know. Um, then I'll kind of throw another, Hey, but it's the same script. I don't change a word. Um, but if I really did it manually, I, I just know my brain, I would lose interest. It would be more like eating some broccoli. Yeah. 
Cool. Well, I think you mentioned um, there are two. Did you say there were two ways that you've grown your list? Yeah. The, the, the other big one is just I love if you're in any kind of network, like for you, Ditcherville, um, mm-hmm. for a few, for a couple of years, I was a story brand person. Um, if you're in any kind of that, you know, there's a big, um, I used to be a member of something called V50. It was like a, just a networking thing with like a thousand people. Uh, there's a ton of those. Just throwing that out there like, hey, everyone. Hey, Ditcherbillions. Um, I'm starting a daily email. Uh, I just need, I will kind of get personal. Though. I just need some warm bodies out there. I just want to know I'm not like whistling through the graveyard. I, I yeah. just yeah. want something. Um, and absolutely, you have to stay on for like three or four days if you can. And then, yeah, just hop off. But I just need a little boost. I'm starting from nothing. I'm um, just yep. super honest. And um, Story Brand, it was like 60 people in two days. Um, and most of those people are still on there. Check um, that out. But that's a, mm-hmm. if you have a little network thing, like any kind of deal, um, people, and you just put it out there, you just kind of show your, your underbelly. You go, yep, mm-hmm. look, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. I, I, you and I both have a friend, um, uh, Houston Ditcherville, mm-hmm. Nate, and he, he's starting a, a daily and it's, it is like, oh, good. Yeah, it's, there's some vulnerable stuff there. And it, it's nice to just go level with people and go, look, I just need a salad here. Yeah, that's great. All right, so let's bring it back full circle as we wrap up. So so once you've got someone, they've written a bunch of emails, they, they've got a bunch of subscribers through this landing page that's maybe hosted with the email provider. What happens, do, like, do they ever loop back and turn that into a website? Do they even care? Or, uh, and if they do, how does it help them with what they write for their, say, their homepage? Um. I'd say half the people turn it into a website. Everyone seems to keep that landing page, that email, like just knowing they're getting responses, getting the signups is so fun. I mean, that's just LinkedIn has a little futility feel to it. Or it can. Yeah, it can. You just put all this or any social in general. Um, and, um, but yeah, I, my thing is pretty intense. Um, it's 16 weeks and it's so logical where the Google doc I send out with the agenda becomes a website in and of itself with this mm. content solar system. And nice. you can really start to see the logic of like, oh, that email is the second paragraph of the about section. Um, like it's very A the B. Um, and it all just makes a lot of it makes sense. At least you don't feel like you're just like, I don't know what to say. I do this thing. Um, but you also get to ease into it um, and just yeah. write something. And I, I think, I think, you know, this you know, 25 minutes, that's all you get. I'm sorry, yeah. but we, you ain't got more time, any more time than that. So I just get, once people get into the groove, I write it about, um, I'd say week seven, of just writing for 25 minutes from start. My big thing, no perfectionism, no planning, um, no procrastinating, just publishing. Um, yeah. And that's what the timer kind of solves. It's just like, look, you're the best. You know, you, you everyone knows you're just doing your, the very best you can. But the, yeah. over time, all those little fields start to get populated. Is that Sweet. Oh, yeah. I I love the idea of giving people a way to take small steps to sort of, you know, eat the elephant one bite at a time. Yeah, because that's the hardest part is like building a website. My favorite is Squarespace. I'm obsessed with their marketing. First of all, it's fantastic. Anytime you can get Martin Scorsese and Super Bowl spot to do your your ad, I'm like, you're you're amazing. Um, Plus, who doesn't love Martin Scorsese? But their whole thing is like, it's so easy to to make a a website with Squarespace. And it is, except um, it's very easy for the creator um, to to make the website. You can kind of throw some stuff off. What's really hard is for the reader to read that website. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's what gets everybody kind of bunched up. And that's my answer to that is if you start with emails, that 
website is going to sort of write itself and it's exactly. going to be a lot easier for your prospect to read it. But that might be another, another story for another time. Yeah. Well, this has been, this has been awesome. So thanks so much for joining. Oh, thanks, Jonathan. I really appreciate you having me. Anytime. So wh where can people go to find out more about you and what you're doing? So this latest thing, it starts in early August. It's called Market Yourself First. And you can go to marketyourselffirst.com. Excellent. We'll look forward to that. I'm sure it's going to be great. Thanks so much, Jonathan. All right, folks, that's it for this week. I'm Jonathan Stark, and this has been Ditching Hourly. Bye.